right, so today we are going to be looking at E89A5. We're going to use models that demonstrate convergent and divergent plate movements that are responsible for most landforms and the distribution of most rocks and minerals within Earth's crust. And so our big questions are, what are the various types of tectonic boundaries? What geologic features form at these boundaries? So we have three types of plate boundaries, convergent, divergent, transform, and transform is sometimes called transverse. So to, the best way to demonstrate this is for you to use Play-Doh. So you're going to need Play-Doh, paper, a pen, or a pencil. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to create two blocks of Play-Doh. You're going to make them square, square-like, like a 3D square. You're going to take those two blocks that you create, you're going to slide them together. So you're going to slide the two blocks of modeling dough across your desk towards each other until they push together, making a mountain where the two blocks collide. And when we do this, this is a convergent boundary. So after you push it together and it's going to look kind of funny. It might kind of look like this picture that you see up here. It might have some folds in it, um, a funny looking shape. They're not going to be perfect mountains. I want you to draw it on your paper and label convergent. Now we're going to talk about what those convergent boundaries create or cause. Okay, so when we push them together, we know that they created a mountain. What are some other things besides a mountain can a convergent boundary create? I mean, look at, look at your model, look at the picture. What are some other things? Oh yeah, a volcano. So convergent boundaries can create volcanoes. Trenches, yes, trenches. What about earthquakes? Can convergent boundaries create earthquakes? Of course, of course they can. So you're gonna you're gonna add to your picture. So you drew your picture of your convergent boundary, and then you're gonna make a, make a list of things that they create: mountains, volcanoes, trenches, earthquakes. And these earthquakes can be small earthquakes or they can be very large earthquakes. Now we're going to make a divergent boundary. So now you're going to have to take, take your Play-Doh apart and you're going to reshape your Play-Doh into two rectangular blocks or two squares, okay? Back to that 3D block. So go ahead and reform them. But this time you're going to lightly press the two blocks against each other. You're not pushing them so hard that they create a mountain, okay? You're just putting them basically where they're touching slightly toward one another. And then you're going to pull the two blocks apart. And when we do that, we call that a divergent boundary because they are moving in the opposite direction of one another. And if you look at this picture, you can see that they create this rift, okay? They create this rift between the land and, and it, as time goes on, this is gonna get wider and wider. Now, now this is a rift, rift valley. But it can also, divergent boundaries are very common in the ocean. And that's where we're going to see our mid-ocean ridges. So take time to draw that and label it as a divergent boundary. And then we're going to talk about all the things that divergent boundaries can create or cause. Yes, definitely earthquakes, ridges, yes, rift valleys. When we were talking about that picture, we talked about it being a rift valley, so a rift valley. 
in seamounts. Seamounts are something else that they can create. So Rift Valley, seamount, earthquakes, and they are going to be small to medium. And then of course, ridges. Now make sure you're recording this information for your divergent boundary. So you know all the things that a divergent boundary creates. So, so far we talked about convergent and divergent. And both of those involve the plane together, moving together and moving apart. And so another thing that we need to kind of understand about divergent boundaries is that as they're pulling apart and underneath the, the lithosphere that's being exposed, we have that mantle that's, that has that magma that's going to come up and harden and make new land. So magma is also involved in this process. So now we're going to create transform or transverse boundaries. And so you're going to reform the modeling dough into rectangular blocks as needed. So if yours got a little messed up from the last one, just fix it a little bit. You're going to place the two blocks side by side so that they are touching. And then you're going to make them slide. So you're going to slide the two blocks past each other at the desk, making sure that they are making contact on edge as they move. And so as they're, as you're doing that, what do you see is happening? We're, we create, we're creating a transverse or a transform boundary. But as you move across, as the land slides across each other, what are all the things that are happening? And then of course, you know, I want you to go ahead and draw what is happening. And I want you to label it transform or transverse. Now, what, what happens when we have these two plates sliding past each other? Yes, earthquakes. Yes, earthquakes. And they can be small to large. So earthquakes are going to be small to large. We see that um, a lot in California. So California sees a lot of earthquakes. So make sure you're writing down that these transverse transform boundaries are creating or causing earthquakes. And so... When we look at this, it says, you know, the movement of tectonic plates is responsible for the formation of most of the continental and ocean floor features on Earth. And so each plate consists of a piece of crust lying on top of the upper portion of the mantle. Okay, this is something that you learned several years ago. And this combination of portions of two layers of Earth is referred to as a lithosphere. So lithosphere is the land that we walk on. Okay, so this is the lithospheric plate. And the part of the mantle directly below this lithosphere is the asthenosphere, which is a, a solid property of plasticity, meaning that it can flow like putty. And so that helps us allow these plates, the lithosphere, to slide across those plates. So let's go back and add lithosphere to your picture. So you drew your picture, you have your arrows that are going the opposite direction. This is a plate. This is a lithospheric plate. So you should add that to your picture. And here's a even, you know, even a better one. It shows you the lithosphere. Okay. And then it shows that the, the lithosphere is sitting right on top of the asthenosphere that's allowing that plate to slide. Now let's go back. So what are the three types of plate boundaries?
All right, so convergent plate boundary. That's where they're converging and they're colliding with one another. Very good. Divergent, they're dividing, pulling apart. And then the last one, transform, where they're sliding past one another. And sometimes we call it transverse. Okay, so now you're going to go through some practice. Okay, so you're going to take the drawings and the notes that you have, and you're going to complete an activity that's called plate tectonics for a Google Classroom, distance learning. Okay, and so through these activities, you're going to read and look at images and see if you can apply the, the notes that you just took to this activity. And if you, if you have questions, make sure you ask your teacher.